Welcome to the classroom. Hi, I'm Laura Nouns, and I hope you've been having a good time with all these blocks we've been covering the last couple of weeks. Uh, today we have a real simple one, so if you need a little time for catch up, this is the perfect opportunity. Uh, the block that we're, we're doing today is called a, a quarter, quarter square triangle. And as simple as it is, there are some real good lessons in here because what we're dealing with is called grain line. And um, to learn more about grain line, we have a, a nice little tutorial and instructions in our resource library. So I encourage you to take a little bit of time and review that. Because what we're looking for here is to always have the straight grain of the fabric around the outer edge of a block. And I'm going to show you in just a minute how we can cut these triangles to make that happen every time. Right? So let's move over here. I've cut two strips of fabric because with this block we want two different, uh, two different colors. You want some, some contrast between the two. And if you will cut your strips, uh, both of them right sides facing. In fact, uh, in the quilt world, if ever you see the term right sides together, what we mean is you put the right sides of the fabric touching each other and then you're going to either cut them together or sew them together. So in this case, I've got four and a quarter inch wide strips of each of my two fabrics. I'm going to cut two <coughs> layers. So four and a quarter inch squares all the way down the entire length of my strips. So if you'll refer to your little PDF, it will tell you exactly how many strips you need to cut for the blocks that will be going into the sampler. Now you might remember from the half square triangles that we cut one diagonal cut. In this case we're going to cut twice. So two cuts diagonally. Some instructions might read cut your squares into quarters diagonally and that's exactly what it means. I seem to have a much easier time cutting in this direction. This is, this is the way I'm accustomed to cutting when I'm doing my strips. So you can see that I've just simply turned my blocks, my squares, on the board so that I can continue with that cut. And I'm going to anchor, let me pull this away for just a second, I'm anchoring the blade of the cutter in the bottom corners and this will help secure those corners while I bring the ruler tight up against the blade. And now all I have to focus on is this upper corner. Otherwise I find I'm doing this, you know, I'm back and forth and back and forth and one slips out of alignment. So anchor first, bring your ruler tight up against, and then hold firmly with your free hand and make your cut. All right. I don't have one of those nifty little uh, revolving boards, but since this is a small uh, block, I can easily go in this direction. But what I was mentioning was there are some boards that you can rotate around. It's like a little lazy Susan. And those would be really handy for some something like this. So now I have four quarter square triangle units that are conveniently stacked and ready to be sewn together. All right? I'm going to position them. Actually, let's do this. I'm going to position them as if you were going to be stitching them like this. Okay? So it's opposite for me, but I think it will make much, much more sense if you're, if you're looking at it the way that you would be sewing it. Okay? So the important thing when you join these units together is you always start by feeding this corner into the machine first. Machines have a hard time when you start working with these little points. So what you would do is pick the first one up, and let me show you one that's already been stitched. Okay, so there we go. So you start here and you stitch all the way down. I just use a darker thread just to help um, make it a little bit more clear with your um, with the thread. Okay, and here's another little trick. Let's see if we can keep this going. So imagine for a minute that there is a little chain of thread connecting. So this is a real time saver. It's a little bit of a thread saver, and I think it's it's just a uh, an efficient way of stitching and it's called chaining. 
So again, always with the corner going into the machine first, stitch straight down, and when you get to the end, you just continue to the chain of thread. Continue the, the chain of thread all the way down, and you can make, you know, literally hundreds of these, depending on how many you need for your, for the block. So you would join these together with your little chain, like we have here, and then take your rotary cutter, a small pair of scissors, and just clip these apart, just like so. Okay, so now you've got a whole stack of these ready to take over to the pressing board. And in this case, we have a light side and a dark side. So let's take them over here. Put the dark side facing up. Always flat on the wrong side first. This just helps to even off the stitching line because if you're working with different weights of fabric, sometimes they get a little bit rippled. And then very carefully, a nice sharp press on the right side. So always wrong side first and then right side. Okay. So these units will go together in pairs like this. Because the seams are pressed in opposite directions, when I place the units right sides together, the seams will automatically be alternating. This is real important because it eliminates having all the bulk in one direction. I'm placing a, plan, a pin right through the stitching line and this will hold secure for when I'm ready to stitch. I'm going to put one pin on this end, one pin on this end. At this point, check to make sure that everything is lined up. You want these little points in line. I also want you to feel in the center. Make sure that you don't have a little gap between the intersections nor do you want them to overlap. They just need to butt up nice and snug together. Okay, let's look over here. And I'm sure you're wondering what in the world this crazy little thing is. But let me tell you, it's just a scrap of fabric. It's been well used because it's got lots and lots of thread on it. And so what it is, is it's like a little leader piece. And so take a scrap of your fabric and put it under the presser foot. I want you to start stitching on this and then when you approach the corner, you can just slide right over. So what you're doing really is I think you're tricking the machine into thinking that it's not going to be dealing with these points here. Let me lay it down. Most of your machines, when they come right into the point, will grab it, will pull it underneath, and it will make a big thread mess. So in using this leader, you can avoid all of that. So you're going to stitch all the way down, and when you get to the end, pay close attention that your stitching line stays even. And that means a good quarter of an inch all the way down, because often machines will, if you let loose, and that what I mean is with your free hand, you have to follow all the way through. If you let loose, many machines will just taper this stitching line right off, so you get a real narrow stitching line. So just pay attention to this, starting and stopping. All right? Then go ahead and clip these off. I didn't mention, but you can certainly continue the chaining. So as many units as, as you need, you continue all the way down. All right? Back to the pressing board. All right? Remember, pressing flat, flat, flat on the wrong side. And then turn and press on the right side. The intersection should be nice and sharp. That means they meet right in the center. And now it's time for the final checkpoint. Bring it back to your cutting mat and place the ruler directly over this, the seams. This unit should measure three and a half inches square. And so I'm looking in both directions with the diagonal. I'm going to cut off these little tails at the same time, the ones that are sticking out in each of the four corners. Don't let this slip. You come up one side carefully without nicking your blade. Come right over the top. Okay, So you've got two sides nice and even. Flip it around and let's do that again. So now you've got three, three lines to look at. Actually four, because we have the two in the middle. These are your diagonals. They should meet directly in the center. You have three and a half on one side and three and a half on the bottom. And then very carefully again, up and over. 
And let me tell you, for years, I never went through this step. I just assumed that they were all gonna be perfectly square and work every single time. And how wrong I was. <laughs> every little bit counts. So take the, take the few minutes needed to checkpoint your blocks because it will really pay off in the end when you start putting everything together. So have fun with this. Hope to see you back in the classroom next time.